Let's talk about BHP, oh, yes. who have been oh. caught underpaying 30,000 of its workers. Now, that's arisen in the context of them um, failing to pay for public holidays when people were at the same time on annual leave. Right. So it seems like it's in the category of error rather than intentional underpayment. And that probably means that they won't be captured by what are otherwise pretty tough relatively new laws passed by the Morrison government to crack down on the underpayment of wages. But what do you think the impact of this will be on the arguments that Labor will be making for its stage two industrial relations reforms? Look, uh, Amanda, uh, the military would say you go for cock up over conspiracy, so I agree with you. It's more <laughs> likely uh, a huge mistake. But it's a monumental mistake and it, it comes at a really awkward time. And here is your problem. You know, so much of corporate Australia running around trying to be profits, P-R-O, uh, P-H-E-T-S, <laughs> rather than worrying about profits, the F-I-T-S. In other words, where the money yeah. comes from, how the money's generated. And I'd have been a great shop steward if I'd gone down that path because I believe you pay good workers a good wage. You pay the better workers a better wage. So people you want in your workforce, you want a safe work environment, you want them paid properly. And if BHP have mm. muffed this up, uh, then they've got to be hugely embarrassed by this. Uh, at the very least, and heads should roll regardless of whether it's a stuff up over a conspiracy. But it, it comes at an awkward time because corporate mm. Australia is cowering as the big government, big unions and big corporates thing is telling them to go out and, you know, vote for this and vote for that and be concerned about this social cause. Pay your workers, run your business dig stuff out of the ground, send it safely off to somewhere else, make money, pay the shareholders. That's what they should be concentrating on. Big corporates are distracted right now, yeah. and this is a really good example of that. And if Labor wants to capitalise on that, on that, that's purely a case of look at them, don't look at me. That's what's going to happen here. And the unions, well, they're going to have a field day with this. And I don't think the, un I think the unions have got too much say and too much sway in so much of this, these things. Um, I say up the workers. The unions are very powerful in this upcoming debate and it really is coming through on an election promise that Labor made, you know, paying the piper, so to speak. Um, but you're absolutely right to say that companies like BHP um, should be focusing on core business, like paying people what they deserve and what they've agreed to well, like, and not telling everybody what they should be doing on their political beliefs. I was seeing a, an ad on... TV that was from some dairy company that was telling everyone not that they make great milk, but they have solar panels in dairy fields. I mean, <laughs> fair income. Can you just produce milk coals? Can you just sell groceries? Bunnings, can you just sell bits and bobs made in China to, to unsuspecting, you know, shoppers? Uh, you know, all this virtue signalling stuff, football, you know, everywhere you turn, you know what, people are getting sick of it. You can do welcome to countries and tell people how to vote at football matches. And I know you're going to talk to Barney about it, but it's just turning people off. People just want to play football, play cricket, sell me groceries, stop telling me what to think. Solar panels in the paddock, kill the grass. What are the cows going to eat? <laughs> I'm sure, Gary, you've been following the aged care summit that's taking oh, yes. place in Canberra. It's been on today. And it's pushing for Australians to pay more for their aged care to yeah. make it long-term financially sustainable as a sector. But I can appreciate that. But aged care isn't cheap right now and Australians are already struggling to bear the price as it currently stands, given the out-of-control cost of living. Labor framed this as an ultimatum. <laughs> Do you want to pay more tax? Yeah. Do you want to pay more for aged care? But isn't that too narrow-minded? Don't we have to look about doing this better so that we can get more... Um, for the people who need it most? You know, they're saying baby boomers, and I, I, I will say right now I'm a late section of the baby boomer generation, right? The <laughs> 45 to 65 people. I was born in that. It's not and a slur. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> and not. And it's treated like a slur and too often. people say I'm pale male and stale. Well, they can, you know, jump in the lake. Look... <laughs> We've paid our taxes and we're not going to get any of the benefits that maybe earlier generations have got. OK, people say too bad, so sad. But in all seriousness, this corporatising of aged care, this belief that government can fix it, that government must fix it, this lack of trust mm. in our community or in our government, rather, for people in the community, families who actually should be the first port of call to look after elderly people, I can, you know, very much so tell you how much we relate to that in our, in our scheme of things, <laughs> keeping people out of institutional aged care for as long as possible. Government doesn't need to give out 
uh, grants or subsidies, just needs to give tax deductions. Let private families make decisions. This corporatising of aged care, we're all gonna, always going to pay the people in the flashes office, the wood panelled office with the flash cars who are running the whole thing before we pay those who are at the beds, looking after the people in the beds. And, and aged care workers are poorly paid because they're the last people to get paid mm. in the whole system. And I think that's wrong. And, and institutional aged care, stay out of it as long as possible, folks. Both for your well-being, yeah. but, um, your but also well. for the financial position. And yeah. um, I really do think that there is a correlation between a too big government expected to do too much yeah. and families being um, too weak, too small, too stretched to be able to, to reach their potential. Told to go away every time, yeah. Gary Hargrave, thank you so much Thanks for your time. I really appreciate having you on the show. Cheers.